So here's number 16 from the 2012 AP Calculus exam. Non-calculator question here that deals with the motion of a particle on the x-axis. Its position at time t is given by x of t. So we have a position function here. What's kind of weird about the position function is they don't tell us what a or b are. So we just have to realize that a and b are constants and they don't equal the same value. For which value of t is the particle at rest? So the question that you're asked, you have to realize that the particle is going to be at rest when its velocity is zero. Now that's only going to be happening for a split second in all likelihood, but when the velocity is zero, the object is not moving to the right any longer and not yet moving to the left. So it's technically stationary for that split second in time. So the particle's at rest if the velocity is zero. You also have to recognize that the rate of change of position, the derivative of position, is velocity. So we basically just have to set our position function's derivative, our velocity function, equal to zero. So I need to take the derivative of this. Uh, if I do the derivative in the form that it's presented in, I am going to have to use a product rule. When I can do something pretty easy to avoid a product rule, I'm going to do that. I can FOIL this out. So when I expand this expression, I end up with these terms. So it's kind of a goofy situation because nothing gets combined because we don't know what the constants for a and b actually are. Uh, but it's going to be a little easier to take the derivative of the function in this form than this form because now we get to bypass the product rule. So I do the derivative of t squared, not a big deal. But be careful when you try to take the derivative of the rest of these pieces. We're not taking the derivative with respect to b or with respect to a. We're doing the derivative with respect to t. B and A are just some constants that we don't know the value of. So if, if we knew the value of B were 5, and this was minus 5T, the derivative of minus 5T would be minus 5. Therefore, the derivative of minus BT is going to be minus B, right? Minus the coefficient, essentially. Similarly, the, co the derivative of minus AT is going to be minus A. Uh, and then this right here is a number, right? We don't know the value of that number, but the derivative of a number is zero, which is why you see my derivative only has three terms, whereas my original function, my position function, had four. So I set this equal to zero and solve for t. So I can add the a and the b to the other side. I can divide by two, and I end up with option b.